rising sun pokes through the trees as a new day is coming to life. It's a Sunday in mid-June here in the Central Oregon Cascade Range, with snow-capped volcanic peaks towering over the extensive conifer forests. We made camp here last night at high enough elevation that snow continues to resist the changing season, though summer will eventually chase this all away. This wasn't our planned destination, but I'll explain that a little later. Our campsite is completely random, but it seems like there's always something to find if you get out and look. I've followed what appears to be an old decommissioned road that dead ends at a leveled clearing. Having stumbled earlier upon an old bucket half buried in the dirt, and a dump of tin cans old enough to be considered artifacts, I'm unexpectedly on the lookout for other signs of historic activity, and an unnatural looking and rather human sized mound topped with rocks catches my eye. Is somebody buried here? Or is it possible that I'm making more of this than it is? Could this just be the roots of a tree that fell so long ago that it has almost disappeared into the soil? I can't help noticing that sometimes fallen trees bring up a pile of dirt and rocks, though not necessarily so human-shaped. Continuing to hike around, I've noticed a glimmer through a dense stand of young pines. Is that water? Look at this, there's a whole little lake hidden in here with mist rising off the glassy surface and no apparent road or trail into this spot this truly feels like a mystical magical place so many such unseen gems there must be in random places we normally pass right by We settled here last night at this random but fortuitously well-placed dispersed campsite when it became clear we weren't going to get where we wanted to go. At the end of the day, literally, this is still a beautiful and serene place to spend the evening, surrounded by pines and the tenacious snow. My friend Wit is cooking a delicious steak dinner for us tonight over the campfire. While fires are already banned in some lower elevation areas, we're fortunate they're still permitted here. We're at 6,500 feet here and the temperature dropped dramatically after the sun tucked itself down into the mountains. Our campsite is literally just yards from where we ran into trouble earlier today. But let me go back to the beginning and show you how we ended up here. I've set off through the rural farmlands of Western Oregon, eventually climbing into the foothills of the Cascades and cresting the pass to meet up with Wit in his quickly converted Chevy van. You've seen Wit a few times before on my channel may recall that his company Grizzlies produces the key component of my favorite camp breakfast. Wit and I are just getting out for a fun excursion today. He has a specific spot in mind where I've never been, and it's nice to just follow along without worrying about navigating. Our plan today was to get to a campsite that Witt has been to before with a nice drive, possibly some nice views of the mountains, but we didn't get very far up the road. In fact, we didn't get off pavement before we ran into a snow gate. Now we've had snow every place much later than it would normally be here. 
Uh, it's been an issue on pretty much all of my trips so far, even when I've tried to avoid it. We are gonna see if we can find a different way around into the area that we were trying to get to, sort of a circuitous route on some other back roads. And so far, so good, we haven't seen any snow. We haven't seen any snow. We I never seem to learn not to say things like that. The further we go, the more elevation we gain, and patches of super slippery spring slush become more and more frequent across the trail, but generally small enough that we can just blast through with some momentum. Well, we're really close. We're so close we can taste it. We don't think there's a whole lot more elevation gain, uh, but we got sort of a nasty patch of snow we got to get through. Snow is the wrong word. Slush, spring slush. We're gonna throw down some max tracks in advance to try and keep from getting stuck in the first place. Oh yeah, that dug right in. You got a pretty good distance. If you can back out, you might be able to just make another push. Okay. Because you've dug this far. Yeah, does it look like I can back out? Well, I would try. Try. Before. Oh. Sorry. Nope. Nope. All right, I'm going to bring the truck up and let's see if we can get the van out of that mucky snow. We were hoping just a little pull from behind would allow him to back out of this, but the van is pretty buried and my winch is simply dragging my truck instead. We were just starting to dig out the van when this Jeep Gladiator appeared coming down the trail from above. Joe and his wife Laura have immediately offered to assist with the recovery, and they get the Jeep into position down by my frontier so we can set up for a double winch pull. Working together, we're finally able to free the van. Joe and Laura were able to come down this road from the other direction with tires aired way down and slowly crawling in four low over the top of these patches of slush. So we're gonna see if that will work with Witt's van.
Unfortunately, the van is a lot heavier than that gladiator, and this technique does not pan out. Ultimately, they decide on giving momentum another shot, but there's just too much distance to cover before the van sinks in, and we end up double winching him back out again. So new plan is Joe is gonna get in front of Wit and try and winch him up so that we don't have to keep winching him back. Gladiator has slid off the side of the road, and in this impossibly slippery slush, I'm skeptical he won't get stuck himself. But I have to say, I'm very impressed watching him pretty easily drive out of this. Position my max tracks to maximize our chances for success, but on its own, the Jeep also ends up just pulling itself towards the van. Are you getting your Jeep unstuck? <laughs> I am now. After double winching the van back out a third time, we're going to try moving the van bit by bit using all the traction boards we have on hand. Joe has four max tracks to add to my pair, plus Wits folding go treads. And probably, yeah, we could just call it at this point, but everyone is game to keep trying to get the van up the trail. Oh, dang! This has turned into a time-consuming and labor-intensive process of digging, positioning, advancing a few yards, then wash, rinse, repeat. I've lost count of how many times we've done this, and I haven't been filming all of it. But eventually, we finally got him up onto the next stretch of dirt. Hey, I'll see you guys in town! <laughs> I've aired my tires down further to 15 PSI, and I'm going to try Joe's technique of slowly crawling across the top of the snow. This ends up working well for the Frontier. Joe and Laura have kindly offered to roll with us back the way they came so they can assist again if needed. made pretty good progress, but this next stretch looks problematic. Yeah, so we are in Joe's Gladiator now, and uh, we're getting to where it's looking kind of nasty, so he offered to just actually drive us up and show us how bad it gets before we uh, go to a bunch more trouble. And we've seen how nicely this thing just climbs over whatever he points it at. I don't, I don't think I've ever been in a Jeep at all. I 
think just this right here. Yeah. Just this right here. So the ride in Joe's Gladiator has convinced us that we cannot go any further. So we're all rolling together back down the trail out of the worst of the snow. While we had to give up on our planned destination, it was an enjoyable challenge trying to get there. Well, Joe, thank you so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and helping us out there. I think we possibly would still be digging. <laughs> uh, we, we definitely would probably still be digging. And then we would have gone on to make more bad decisions. <laughs> Wit and I have decided to stay in the campsite that happens to be right here where we need it as Joe and Laura head off towards home. That brings us back to where we started, Sunday morning in this random, unexpected campsite. Wit is the breakfast guy, and as usual, he does not disappoint. So this is our organic wildberry muesli, and I've kind of done just an overnight oats with it. So we poured some almond milk on it and just put it in the fridge there and let it sit overnight. And so it just softens the oats up and the nuts as well, a little bit, the hazelnuts and the rolled dates. and. You just eat it raw. Then I just brought some fresh berries as well to, to put on top of it. Just an easy, fast, and yet hearty breakfast uh, for the road. Mm. After parting ways with Wit, I'll continue on with a solo trek into areas of desert and national forest I've never explored before. Subscribe now so you don't miss a single episode. And if you enjoy the content I bring you, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you for watching.